I want you to take a trip with me back to the year 2005. Tom Cruise was jumping on Oprah's couch, Revenge of the Sith was in the movie theaters, and 50 Cent opened his own candy store. You open up your Game Informer to see the name of a game called Metroid Dread, a game that's being toted as a sequel to Metroid Fusion, which came out in 2002. By that point, it had been three years, and you think to yourself, hey, it's about time, right? It's gotta be out soon. Much, much, much later. Finally, a game that was a gaming legend is finally made reality. Metroid Dread was the game that was whispered on forums and talked about amongst Metroid fans for literally years. And every single time the idea of a new 2D Metroid popped up, the title of Metroid Dread would always rear its head all the time. And speculation for the game only increased when there was a small tease for it in Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. So yeah, needless to say, Dread was on a lot of Metroid fans' mind. And in a move almost as shocking as Nintendo announcing a Metroid Prime 4, they brought back Dread back from the dead. So here we are in the year 2021, and the game is finally amongst us. It's a physical real thing, and it's our first brand new 2D Metroid game since Fusion, which we were all enjoying on our Game Boy Advances back in 2002. There are children who were born and are now going to college in between these two games. Holy shit. But herein lies the question, is, is it worth the wait? Was Dread as good as we had all hoped it would be? Well, I can tell you one thing. I got literal goosebumps when that title screen popped up and I got to hear that phenomenal Metroid theme play, that ominous tune. Absolutely fantastic. The game, of course, opens to an absolutely phenomenal rendition of Samus' theme alongside of beautiful art giving us a little recap of the events of Metroid Fusion. I mean, I would sure f hope so. You might forget a few things in 19 years, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to lie. Seeing this art at the beginning really makes me want to see an HD remake of Metroid Fusion so bad. Fusion is my favorite Metroid game of all time, so that is what I'm going to be stacking this game up against. But of course, seeing any references to Fusion is going to make me all giddy, because I love it so much. And again, this HD art was just absolutely phenomenal. Seeing all the old enemies again, especially Spooky Samus, fantastic. Of course, we get our first snippets of the story, and those wily ex-parasites that Samus thought she wiped out may not all be dead. The Federation sends some new robots out there to go look for them, called Emmys and of course, promptly loses contact with them. So then they decide to send the person who, you know, wiped them out the first time. So of course, Samus goes to this planet called ZDR, and this next part of the story probably had a lot of people guessing, if I'm being honest. So see if you can guess where this is going. So well, I'll give you three choices. Option one, Samus goes down to the planet, finds the X-Parasite, promptly destroys it, and you win. Option two, Samus goes down to the planet, sees Ridley, starts to cry, and you lose. Finally, option three, Samus goes down to the planet, gets her ass kicked, loses all of her abilities, and then you have to travel around the planet and collect all of your old abilities again, so you can eventually win. If you picked option three, congratulations, you're, you're the fucking superstar. So in a move that shocked absolutely nobody, this game follows the same basic formula that all 2D Metroids follow. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that, okay? We fans of Metroid are fans for a reason. What kind of life would I live if I didn't enjoy going and collecting Samus' shit that constantly gets lost every time she goes on a new mission? She really should start packing extra suits or something. But anyway, here we are on ZDR with very little abilities as usual, and this game oozes with atmosphere. I mean, what Metroid game really doesn't? Metroid games are all about atmosphere, which makes sense. I mean, the game was heavily inspired by the Alien franchise by Ridley Scott, and that is also heavily, heavily influenced by atmosphere. The atmosphere of being alone, being isolated, in a hostile alien environment, and this game does it well. The atmosphere in Dread is awesome, it's great, and the environments are absolutely fantastic. There's some really nice variety going on with the environments in this game. It's not all just cramped labyrinths of laboratory hallways or something like that, though that's definitely there. Our very first zone, Artaria, 
or Artaria, however you want to say it, is this huge expanse of flooded caverns with waterfalls and rays of light just barely shining into the caves from the surface. And the environments just get cooler from there. You have a giant power plant that controls geothermal energy, where you have to change the flow of the magma in order to get into certain areas of the factory. A spooky laboratory where you have to turn the power back on, so you have to go through areas of total darkness, only with just small little tiny bits of illumination from Samus's suit or little machines that are still on, or enemies. There's a really cool underwater research facility where there's like coral reefs, and you see all kinds of sea life swimming in the background. There's a jungle zone with all kinds of overgrown ancient trees, and you see all kinds of animal life running around here and there. There's a lot of great variety with these environments, and it really mixes it up and makes you excited to move on to the next zone, just to see it. Which brings us to the visuals for this game. This is a beautiful game. Is it the greatest looking Switch game? No. But it looks good. The art style doesn't do anything necessarily unique or special, but it does generally just look good. If anything, I guess the art style is kind of cool because it, it keeps that SNES kind of feel or vibe to it, even though it's 3D. Which is really weird to explain, but I don't really have any other way to explain it. Now, I will admit that it does seem a little bit like this game is held back by the Switch. This is definitely a game which, in my opinion, would have definitely benefited from more powerful hardware. But that's just a very small nitpick and doesn't really take away from, in my opinion, a really good game visually. Everything from Samus' new design to the enemy design is very, very cool. Speaking of enemies, let's get into the new enemies, the Emmys. And I'm not talking about that trash can award show. Now you're gonna see these fuck a lot. And you're either gonna love these things or you're going to absolutely fuck hate them. You see, Samus is being hunted by these things. And don't worry, I'm not gonna spoil as to why they're hunting her down. All you need to know is that these things are General Grievous and all over the place searching for Samus. Now there are multiple Emmys in the game, each one is a different color, and they are in sort of their own contained zone. These Emmy zones often encompass multiple rooms and areas on the map. And these areas will be noted with a special door that leads into them. And then once you're inside, you hear this kind of spooky music and the lighting is kind of weird and foggy. And a lot of times you'll hear this little things boop boop boops and beep beep beeps as it creeps around and searches for you. Now these little bastards go around and scan the area looking for you. And if they see you, the chase begins. And if they catch you, well, you're dead. It's an instant death, unless you manage to put one upside their head with your sneaky little cannon counter move, which is a cool little ability that they added in this game for Samus. It's actually my favorite thing. Now you can just walk up to shit and just punch it right in its face. Which totally makes sense that this badass bounty hunter that's been, you know, doing all this fighting for decades would have an ability to punch things. So yeah, if you can sneak a little slap in there, you'll stun these things long enough that you can Mega Man slide under their legs and get the hell out of there. Now, you'll need to avoid these things all the way up until you find the little mini-boss that, upon killing it, will give you the energy that you require to actually destroy these things. Because these Emmys are indestructible to any of Samus's abilities, aside from this specific type of energy that you can get, in which case then you can f*** these things up. Which will then usually award you with a new ability. So the Emmy areas are, they're alright. I mean, the first one's cool, the second one's still fun, but to me personally, they got a little old fast. Like, I get it, the concept is neat, and it's really cool to like, have to think fast and try to get through this area while you're being chased by this thing that's gonna instant kill you and you have to find your way out and stuff and it definitely adds a sense of urgency to your exploration but honestly it can be pretty f frustrating the instant death is a real bitch generally metroid games are pretty challenging enough but when you're adding in a instant death factor it just bumps the challenge rating up from mildly aggravating to, at the very least, cursing at the television levels of rage. And trust me, when it comes to dying, you're gonna do that a lot in Dread. Most of your deaths, no doubt, will be mostly to the Emmy sections and the bosses. Which brings us to the bosses. The bosses are definitely quite challenging in this game. 
The first boss, Corpius, is kind of your standard Metroid fare. That one wasn't too hard. I, I managed to beat him after maybe one try, but goddamn does the difficulty ramp up on just the second boss. The second boss, though, is my favorite because it's that lovable big boy, Kraid. It was so cool to see him come back in this game, and unexpected to be honest. Well, I mean, we all knew he was in because of that trailer, but it was unexpected that we were going to see him in Dread generally. I feel like Kraid's just one of those bosses that's always in kind of like Ridley's shadow. Because, I mean, you can't deny the overwhelming popularity of Ridley. But, you know, big boy Kraid needs some love too. And they gave him some love. They loved him so much that they chained him in a room filled with hot boiling magma and have Samus say hello to her old friend again by shooting him right in the goddamn face. Yeah, Kraid's a bit of a toughie. He's kind of hard. But fun fact, you can actually sequence break and get Morph Ball Bombs before you actually fight Kraid. Which if you do that, you can explode the wall when you hit phase two of his boss fight and pretty much instant kill him. So that'll make it a little bit easier on you. But just be aware that the bosses only get harder from here. But yes, this game is definitely no slouch when it comes to challenging bosses. But like I said, there are sequence breaks, which for those of you who are unfamiliar, a sequence break is getting a particular item or items in the game before you were really supposed to. This is something that's actually in quite a few Metroidvania games because they're all about exploration. And there's ways sometimes where you can get into areas where you weren't technically supposed to be if you got them skills enough to reach them with limited abilities. And there are definitely quite a few sequence breaks that can help you fight bosses and make them a little bit easier. And this is really cool and really speaks well to the exploration aspect of this game. One issue that I and a lot of other fans of Metroid Fusion have is that the game was kind of linear. It was a little bit more straightforward when it came to the exploration, and so you didn't really get lost that much in Fusion. Dread is a much more open-ended game, with a lot more exploration there. And there's really next to no hand-holding in this game. So you're definitely going to find yourself getting lost a lot. But that's great, because at the end of the day, that's really the spirit of these types of games. There's lots to explore and lots to do in Dread's environments. And trust me, you can spend hours in a zone just because you're going in circles, because you don't realize where you have to go next right away. Though more often than not, the answer is right in front of you, but it's usually so obvious you just tend to miss it. Some people may not like that aspect of the game that much, but that's just the way Metroid games have been pretty much since the original Metroid. And speaking of the original Metroid, let's touch on the story of Dread. Nintendo games aren't usually often noted for their narratives. If anything, that's usually the weakest part of most Nintendo games, because Nintendo is about gameplay first and narrative and story second. Though, this isn't really the case with the Metroid games. The Metroid games have always had an overall narrative, and it's usually relatively central to the gameplay of the games. Dread has a fantastic story, and it's a story that sort of brings all of the previous Metroid games full circle. Obviously, I'm not going to touch onto story details for spoiler's sake, but you'll just have to take my word for it that the story in this game is actually really good. And along with a good story, comes really great characterization for Samus. Yeah, Samus is a total badass in this game, as she should be. No more of this bullshit. this Samus now.
which is actually incredibly fitting for her character. And not only that, but they even gave Samus a voice in this game, which isn't incredibly unique as she did talk in other games, unfortunately so in one of them, but it's still interesting to note because it's not something that we see very often with the Metroid titles. But yeah, Samus is back to being a badass in this game, which is absolutely fantastic. And along with the return of Samus's badass attitude, we get a few fantastic new abilities, like her new little slide that she does, and the aforementioned counter ability that really just makes Samus feel like this veteran bounty hunter, like she's been doing this for a long ass time, which is extremely fitting. The slide is a nice little maneuver that helps you get through small little crevasses early in the game before you get your morph ball ability, and the counter is very cool, though I would say it is a little bit overused, but it definitely added some new challenge to the game, especially with some of the boss fights and a few enemies that are more easily dispatched when you use the counter on them. The movement overall in this game is buttery smooth, and this is probably the best Samus has felt in a Metroid game moving around pretty much ever. So that brings us back to the question we asked at the beginning of the video. Is Metroid Dread worth the wait? Uh, yeah. I would say so. This is an incredible game. I'm not gonna sit here and say that it would be like game of the year or something like that, but it's damn good. Of course, you're gonna see a lot of different reactions online. You have people out there who are saying this is the greatest Metroid game ever made. You have people out there who are saying that it's not that great of a game and it's overrated. And honestly, where that falls for you is definitely going to be down to personal preference. Is this my favorite Metroid game? No, but that's only because Fusion just has such a special place in my heart that nostalgia pretty much refuses to allow me to knock it off its pedestal. But with that being said, Metroid Dread has absolutely cemented itself as my second favorite game in the series. This was a spot that was firmly held onto by Super Metroid, but honestly, Dread did knock Super Metroid off the pedestal for me. This is a great example of a game that kept the fundamentals of the franchise, it didn't forget the franchise history, brought in new elements to the franchise to make it fresh, but not so much to where it's overwhelming and makes it feel like a completely different game. This is a very familiar Metroid game with a new shiny coat of paint. This is easily one of the best games the Switch has to offer and really helps cement the Metroid 2D games as some of the best games Nintendo have ever put out. If you're a Switch owner, I honestly consider this game a must play. And if you're a Metroid fan and you don't have Dread, what the hell are you waiting for? The one big gripe I do see about the game is the game's length. You're gonna see a lot of posts online of people beating this game in 7 hours, 10 hours, but honestly, the game's play clock lies to you first of all. It doesn't count deaths, it doesn't count times that you pause the game to look at the map, and I don't believe it counts cutscenes either. So it really does trim quite a bit of actual hours and playtime that you put into the game off of it because it only considers raw gameplay in your overall time. But honestly, this game runs about the same length as a lot of other Metroid titles. And it's pretty similar to games like Breath of the Wild where it's kind of as long as you make it. There are lots of different pickups and collectibles on the maps and areas to explore if you actually want to dig deep and explore them all in the game. So honestly, Metroid Dread is quite lengthy. It has quite a bit of meat to it. So it's definitely not as short as I see a lot of people say it is. And of course, the replay value for Dread is pretty high. Once you beat the game, you unlock hard mode. So if you're a real sadist and you didn't have a hard enough time going through the game the first time, you can always just play hard mode and really hate your life. Unless you're just really good at Metroid. Then I guess you can just impress us all with your amazing skills. Either way, what did you think of Metroid Dread? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Are you not interested in it? Why don't you let me know down in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a like, that really helps out. If you really like this video, feel free to subscribe. I put out gaming videos every few weeks. Unfortunately, YouTube is not my job, so I can't put all the time in the world into it. Hopefully, as my channel grows, maybe someday that will change, but for now, Unfortunately, I can't put out videos as regularly as I would like to. However, I do upload frequently. Of course, you can always hit that little bell so you do know when I upload videos and you won't miss them. If you're loving Metroid Dread, if you love video games as much as I do, comic books, anime, movies, whatever, feel free to jump into my Discord chat. I'll have a link down in the description below. The chat is growing more and more over time. 
There is a great bunch of folks in there. We have phenomenal conversations. It's a lot of fun. I honestly wish I could poke my head into the Discord more than I'm able to due to busyness, but I love it in there. It's great. There's a lot of good people, so if you want to have fun conversations, meet some new friends, and play some games, feel free to jump right on in. And at the end of all of my videos, I always like to thank everyone who's watching, everybody who's subscribing. It honestly never ceases to amaze me or blow my mind every time I get more subs. It's, it's a fantastic feeling, and I cannot thank you guys enough. Your support means the world to me. It's absolutely incredible. I honestly never even thought I would make it this far on YouTube, so the fact that my channel is still growing is just absolutely incredible, and I can't thank you guys enough. Honestly, I really, really can't. And I want to throw out an even bigger thank you to those of you who have stuck by me for so long, despite me being a small channel, despite my somewhat erratic upload schedule. I mean, really, honestly, I can't thank you enough. But this video is long enough. I've already been going on too long. So again, thank you. Have a great day. Be safe out there and bye bye.